Okay. Pennsylvania is one of the few states that has what we call defined benefits pensions. The pensions in Pennsylvania are basically fixed. When you retire, whatever has been determined your pension, you get that the rest of your life. If we have a downside in the economy, which we have, and the funding by the government does not keep this going, which they haven't, because they're playing with budget matters and trying to cover Rob Peter to pay Paul because Rendell needs the money. So it goes to the various reasons other than the intent. But based on what happened with the downside in the economy and not completely funding this program, we're now faced with a problem where school boards and government have to come up with about $1,360 per household in the next two years to get that defined pension program solvent so that those that retire will continue to get their money. Uh, it's a contract that they can't break. Uh, if we tried to break it, uh, the courts would choose down. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's history. However, what can we do about it? What we can do is have a bill on the floor that will change from defined benefits to defined contributions. Yeah, that's right. That's what we have. That's what we have. When our 401ks took a hit, we took a hit. We took a second hit because when that program took a hit, they need our tax money to shore it up. So we get nailed twice. They're immune to the problem. That's the problem. They don't feel the crunch, and they're perfectly comfortable with it. Okay, so we'll grandfather them in. On day certain, we'll get a bill, make it law, that those are in the system, stay in the system. However, from that date forward, we're going to change the system, where if you're a politician and you want a pension, you do the same as the rest of us. Put money into the system, and at the end of your period of terms, however many you want to serve, you get out what you manage to save, and not get it out of my pocket. Uh, pay raises to pensions, to more pay raises to up to the top. I'll tell you, uh, back in 2001, that's when the economy wasn't half bad. And that's when politicians decided the money's there, let's raise the ante. So what they did, they passed a bill that gave public employees and school teachers a 25% increase in their pension. Well, that made the PSEA fine because PSEA is the number one finance lobbyist group in, the, in Pennsylvania, more so than the lawyers, believe it or not. Well, they got what they wanted. They were satisfied. Well, what the politicians did after they got them their 25%, they gave themselves 50%. <laughs> so now the pension crisis is here. They raised their pensions to the point that they're not affordable. And this is where we have to come in and make a change. I'll give you just an example where these folks think they need more money to do their job. You just take a House of Representatives uh, of Pennsylvania. Right now, I think he's at 78,300 base pay. He got 7,800 for his automobile allowance. Between uh, per diem at $162 a day, I think, or 63, 52 or 53. Anyway, I multiplied it out based on the days that are in session. That's another $15,480. They get hospitalization, medical, and drug, $17,000. That's a total of $118,580. And when I challenged one of our local reps on the amount of money they're making and the amount of time they serve. He said, well, actually, when I said we don't need a full-time legislature, he said, well, really, we're not. We're really a part-time. <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what, you're making a nice part-time wage, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, just imagine, and here's where, here's where it rubs. We have, a, we have a congressional race coming up. And just for example, we have an incumbent who was a rep, suddenly became a senator, 
Now he's going to be a congressman. This is all in a matter of a year or two. I mean, it's like he belonged to the lodge going through the chairs. <laughs> well, the fact is, the same gentleman who wants to be my congressman, he put the pay raise through in 95. He worked the pension increase in 01. And the illegal pay raise, he was the floor manager that railroaded that illegal pay raise through. I have a problem with somebody not even recognizing the Constitution disallows him to do that. He actually put that raise through, took the money right away. Now, in this particular gentleman's case, and he's not alone, he didn't return the money. $8,000 he claimed he gave to his favorite charity. My tax money he gave to his charity. He probably got a write-off to boot. I didn't get the write-off. Now, you think about that. The, the amount of money that he's making, and he has to still take that illegal pay raise and not return it. I have a real problem with that for a lot of reasons. First of all, he took an oath that he would uphold the Pennsylvania Constitution. <coughs> Aside from that, when he took that oath, this is the oath he took. Article 2, Section 8. The members of the General Assembly shall receive such salary and mileage for regular and special sessions as shall be fixed by law, and no other compensation whatever, whether for service upon committee or otherwise. In other words, he only gets what he gets when he took office. He can't have any more until his term is over. If they vote themselves a raise to the next term, constitutionally legal, uh, illegal I should say, but questionable if they deserve the money. I challenge him on this, but I challenge further than that. I wrote to our Attorney General, three times, same letter, three times, no response. I met him face to face. I challenged him then. I said, Attorney General, aside from that statement, let me read you another one. <coughs> Section 7, no person hereafter convicted of embezzlement of public monies, primary perjury, or other infamous crime, shall be eligible to the General Assembly. Now, if a guy takes an oath that he's got to uphold the Constitution, and he takes the money, and he doesn't give it back, and I have no authority over that, but if my chief law enforcement officer does, and he does nothing about it, I question if he's doing his job. And now he wants to be governor. I have a problem with people like that. I'm not interested in seeing taking my money, serving in their capacity, and trying to tell me how they're going to govern me.